Hello everyone and welcome to part 15 of the hot tub build series where we're going to get this beast started. A couple things I have to do before I can fill it with water is put caulk on all the joints on the tile so to allow for expansion and contraction. Also I'm putting all the jets in and the little stub pipes, uh, wiring in the lights, just taking care of little bits and pieces uh, before this thing can get wet. So this is going to be a relaxing day of installing these jets. But as a, as a curmudgeon, I have to say the modern world has proved me wrong. Uh, let's see. The instructions that even reference this part number seem to be off by an inch or uh, just above an inch because the first one I put together following the instructions did not fit. I really should have measured it again, just as a gut check, but it's just drives me crazy that, you know, you should be able to trust instructions. At least this whole, whole spa industry is just proprietary tools, hard to find parts, misinformation. It's just crazy. And then, uh, the new instructions appear to require you to buy a special tool, which is available online, but it takes, you know, weeks to get here. Um, Instead of just telling you a measurement, it, it's better to sell a proprietary tool, not even assume that someone knows what, you know, that they could possibly do it themselves. Like, yeah, you get this tool or, you know, it's three and a sixteenth, which is what I figured out. And the rest of these ones that are in <sighs> fit fine. And I, and I made a wrench because I wasn't going to wait to buy this wrench and this works perfectly. Um, this, this bad one here, when I was putting it in, just sheared off. Um, all the other ones were fine. You know, I put a little, uh, little spit, a little lubrication on the O-ring. And so that was a bear trying to get that one out. Thank God I did, because if I was stuck inside, it would be a big, big pain. So I have more parts in the way. I did end up getting a couple more jet housings and they went in pretty easily with that new measurement. And then all the jets just screwed right on in and they look pretty good. This is an exciting part. I'm finally putting the control panel in its bezel. So I got a little O-ring material. Let's see if I can get this to stay in. I'm gonna leave the gap on the bottom. And now I have these little tiny, tiny screws with their own o-rings because we only we don't mess around when we're building hot tubs i don't want any water getting behind here and causing trouble so these screws will hold down the panel against the o-ring in there and then they have their own seal sweet all right i'm gonna tighten this up time to put the fuses these big mamas and the disconnects. Turn on some of the power and verify stuff is working. So I checked. So I'm the only one here. So unless the cats know how to use the, the panels. This is the generator. I check, just checked that, that this is off. And then I'm going to check now. This 100 amps is off. small one. I'm gonna even verify that there's no voltage. I don't want to electrocute myself. Well, look at this, hot tub's filled with water. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's gross water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime the pump and then use the pump out hose to cycle the water through like a strainer, collect any junk that might be in the pipes, uh, you know, PVC dust or sticks or sawdust or any of that garbage. And once that's kind of clean, get the filter in and hopefully heat this guy up. This is the pump out connection. 
that's up here so we can bleed it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close the return. So now water is not gonna go into the, the filter zone or really back through the whole system. The pump, it's gonna pull everything through here, pump it up and then return it. Now we don't have a lot like big particles. You know, if there was like chunks of garbage in there that could mess the pump up, I would uh, strain it out. We're talking like little bits of dust that I just don't want to clog the filter right off the bat. And then over here, I just threw a, uh, like a little pasta strainer out of the skimmer and use a rock to keep the hose from jumping around. That'll catch any of this initial junk. All right, for this first prime, so I'm closing this valve here. And uh, this is the air reliefs. Uh, if I point this up and it's gonna use the air release and I point this down, it's going to allow the vacuum pump to put suction on the system and draw water up into this system. And actually I'm gonna open this up so that the whole system can be pulled water in here. So let's start the vacuum pump. So there we already got water getting pulled through the system by the vacuum pump. And it's gonna fill this whole thing up. There it goes there. There it goes there. And once I see the water in there, I'll cut the pump off and start the actual circulation pump. There it is. So you can see there was like some junk in there. Now let's go check the other thing out. All right, it took a little bit of fiddling with the uh, the priming pump and letting some air out of the system, but we got the water. So you can already see there's like garbage clock in there. So I'm gonna let this run a little bit and then get the heater turned on. All right, we got the circulation pump running through the filter now. Put the filter in. Let all the air out of the sacrificial anode. Now it looks like we, our bypass is closed. All the water going through the heater. Now I can't tell if the heater's on because I have not seen the temperature go, but this is quite a bit of water. And there's no obvious temperature increase in the outlet. But I don't see any problems here, so it seems like it's working. So this is a crazy time for this hot tub build. My clients were on vacation. I was trying to get this thing put together, heated up so we could all enjoy it. Everything appeared to be working. We had a circulation pump was fine, the chlorinator was running, the ozonator was running, the jet pump would run. Even the heater was running just fine. And I went to bed and the power went off. So I called a guy out, he reset this transformer, turned the heater back on, and it went out again. And long story short, even though the house had sufficient service to provide for the electric heater, the pole transfer was old and it could not supply sufficient power before its breaker was blown. Uh, which is a strange situation because you expect if you have a 200 amp service you should be able to draw 200 amps, but not if your pole transformer uh, only supports 60 amps per leg. So these utility guys were nice enough to come out in the rain and install an upgraded pole transformer, brand new. And I was elated because even though there was a slight delay, we got the transformer in, powered up the whole house, turned the heater on, and after several hours, the hot tub was up to temperature and really nice. Well, this is really enjoyable. I am sitting in a hot tub that I made. It's 
105 degrees. It's drizzling on me. Got a little whiskey poured. Love and life. Everything works. The circulation pump is on right now. You can't hear it. The pump house is there. This is great. It's going to be tough trying to finish this deck when this beautiful hot tub is sitting right here, but I will uh, do my best to get it done. Oh, what a relief. Hi, if you liked this video, please let me know by clicking that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button. Please check the notes below the video for more ways to keep this channel going. Your support is greatly appreciated. And always, never stop building.